Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And yesterday I put up a photo of a new bar that I got. And I had mentioned that this would be used for bench pressing and that it would be used for deficit deadlifts. And I had a number of people go, I don't understand how this would help with deficit deadlifts. It doesn't make sense. Some people tried to explain it to them in typing. Not very well, <laughs> people still didn't get it. So I'm gonna demonstrate this for you guys. And I wanna talk about a couple things with it first. Um, and we'll talk in a minute about why a lot of exercises, the range of motion is ambiguous. Full range of motion doesn't always mean what you think it means. And in the case of a deadlift like this, this is a perfect example. Um, and then I want to talk about before I demonstrate this, I want to make this clear. If you do not have a strong low back and core, do not do this. Don't even consider deep deficit deadlifts. Uh, it's reckless. These are perfectly safe if done carefully with respect, even for maxes. But here's the added caveat. You need to have built your low back up. If you have done, in other words, only big heavy compound movements, if that, that's all you've done and you think you have a strong core, you don't have a strong core. I'm just gonna call it flat out. There is no way of squatting and deadlifting are the, the tools that you use to build your core that you should be doing this. I mean things like good mornings, hyper extensions, reverse hypers, like a perfect world, reverse hypers. Combined with good mornings, if you've done very high volumes of them and you've built your low back up and you train your abs, and I've had that come up to people who are like, Jason, why don't you train your abs? And then you know you see these hanging here. What do you think these are for? Come on. They're hanging right there on my rack. I do tons of leg raises. But build your core. If you do not have a strong low back, and good bracing on a deadlift, this is dangerous. But what you guys can see, here's the problem we run into with deficit deadlifts. What happens usually, at least for, for a lot of us, we start getting to about the three inch, four inch, something like that. It becomes impossible to do sometimes because of, again, the height of the bar and then the bar hitting your foot. No one wants to miss a max deadlift or a heavy deadlift and have the bar hit the top of their foot up here. It might clear down at your toes but that part of your foot's higher up. And when you drop that and it hits, it's gonna hurt. And you may not be able to fit your foot in there. The problem is the bar gets in the way of your feet. Therefore, the range of motion on a deficit deadlift is limited by the barbell in your feet. This corrects that. Now this is normally used for bench pressing. Uh, it can also be pretty good for rowing too, for obvious reasons, if we want to increase the range of motion. It has applications for the barbell row. Same thing with the bench press though. You can see how that would increase the range of motion. So what I've done, I've built a five inch deficit here. I have four EVA foam pads that are one inch thick and I have a one inch thick calibrated road plate on top. And if you guys notice that creates a five inch deficit and the bar sits above that. Now, because this also will create a, almost a snatch grip, not a true snatch grip, but a wider grip than normal, that creates a larger deficit. So this is actually a longer range of motion due to your arm position as well. So this is, is something like the equivalent of, if compared to a normal grip, this might be a five and a half or even six inch deficit in terms of the range of motion. Because again, the wider, grip you'll be forced to take as well. And in many cases, this may require the use of straps. Okay, because of that wider grip and this doesn't, sort of bar doesn't have the knurling you might want, you might actually need to strap up for this. And that's okay. Uh, we can do tons of other stuff for our grip. So as you guys can see, I'm gonna demonstrate, this creates a pretty ridiculous deficit. All right, <laughs> this is a big deficit. Let me see if I can do this. Look at that. All right, that is a serious deficit. Look at my hand position relative to my feet. Okay. Dramatically increases the range of motion on the deadlift through the hardest part. You are not going to be able to lift anywhere near the same weight. I would venture to say depending upon the person that I haven't tried it yet, I'm gonna predict like a hundred pounds difference. So for this, for example, for me, if I get up into the 500 on this, when I go to test it, I'll be thoroughly impressed. If I can pull five, like 525 with this, I'll be impressed. The downside to a bar like this, they do have weight limits. Um, this bar has a limit of 600 pounds. 
They, these are not easy to find. It's difficult to find a Cambridge bench bar, also called a McDonald bar. They're not easy to find right now. They're not a lot of them are manufactured. It took me a while to get one. Um, it, took, it took me several months actually. But I've got one uh, and I got it for less than 300, so I'm thrilled. It only holds 600 pounds. But by that same token, if I can do a four inch or a five inch deficit with 600 pounds, which is the safety limit of the bar, I will be as strong as I ever need to be. I'm literally for where I'm about to be in terms of age and weight. We're talking world record level deadlifts at that point. Okay. If I could hit the weight limit on this on a deficit. So I'll be thrilled with that. And you know what, if I end up bending a bar, so be it. But the 600 is the safety limit. And people will say stuff like, well, that's, that's just the, the recommended limit. Uh, I found with barbells and training equipment that th those limits are actually pretty, pretty legit. I have found personally exceeding the, the recommended limit on a piece of equipment like a barbell by 50 pounds is enough to break it. Like to bend your bar, ruin it permanently. I've, I've learned this firsthand. I take those limits seriously. Um, now, here's the other thing that that brings up. We come over to the range of motion. Range of motion is in, more ambiguous than people want to make it out to be. We can talk about full range of motion, but when we're dealing with big multi-joint exercises in which you, you are limited by the equipment, range of motion is not a constant. So if someone says, oh, you're going to do a board press with, with three inches of board difference, it's like, I don't know, depending on some person's structure, that might be a normal range of motion. Okay, comes down to the limitations of the equipment. Someone else, they might touch their chest at that. This adds several inches deeper to the range of motion. It's still the bench press, it's still with the barbell. So what's full range of motion? It's very ambiguous. Range of motion is specific to what you're doing, specific to joint angles. Um, in terms of hypertrophy, the concept of range of motion might be a little more ambiguous than people think it is also. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So well, these specialty bars like this, this is why I have so many specialty bars. It gives us a lot of tools, okay? It gives us a lot of tools to work with to, to develop maximum strength, maximum hypertrophy, our athleticism, build different joint angles. Stuff like this gives us a lot to work with. And, but this was originally invented for bench pressing. And the, and the guy who invented it ended up with well over a 600 pound raw bench press himself. And this is one of the tools that he used. Um, so again, useful tool has multiple different uses, even though it was intended for bench pressing, stuff like the ability to do deep deficit deadlifts, way up there. And as you guys can see, I had more room. So a five inch isn't the actual limits of this equipment. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.